uh, my case presentation, it's a little bit different. It's uh, more of a strategy than uh, all the cases. So below the knee intervention, pedal access, and optimal below angioplasty. Um, atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response. Uh, once the heart rate was controlled uh, on physical exam, he had a large non-healing ulcer of the left heel. Uh, also, the toes were really cold and dark. So initial best ABI was 0 0.82. Uh, the DP was doppelable, but there's no PT. But given the uh, clinical scenario, obviously this, the guy needed angiogram. So he's a tall guy. So after the abdominal aortogram was run off, I switched to uh, ipsilateral anti-gray approach, uh, SFA popliteal open, and below the knee, perineal arteries of single vessel runoff with a tight stenosis, AT is occluded, and PT is sort of peters out in the mid-calf area, and there's no flow into the foot. And even though the perineal artery constitutes the DP, the vascularity beyond the midfoot is pretty much none. So. Um, in this case, um, uh, with a six French destination sheet in the, in the distal SFA using O1A uh, crossing catheter and wires, I was actually able to cross the entire PT occlusion uh, without getting retrograde access. And the wire uh, went into the plantar arch and uh, almost a little bit retrograde up the, the pedal loop. Uh, so I went ahead with uh, orbital arthrectomy. Uh, uh, plain old balloon, then I chased it with chocolate balloon, 3.0 and 3.5 proximally. So uh, once the PT was fixed, because the wire had already sort of turned back through the pedal loop, upgrade the DP, um, uh, a bit of cheating, I used ultrasound, uh, uh, accessed the DP retrograde, and again, using a, a same wire and catheter system, I was able to cross the entire AT and get the wire uh, externalized. So. I know uh, the floss technique is becoming very popular, so I always try to externalize the wire on both ends of the sheet. So here the, is the Rubicon that's coming out, the, out of the pedal sheet, and I, uh, it, we have some limitations, so I always use the Viper 475 centimeter wire coming out, and then you get a really good railing. Pretty much it allows you to deliver uh, any balloon or stent down as far as down as you want. Um, so going back to the patient, so the AT was treated uh, with the uh, arthrectomy and the balloon angioplasty as well. And um, here you could see the uh, three vessel runoff and with good uh, PT and the DP into the foot with a little bit of a uh, pedal loop uh, for good outflow. So um, chocolate balloon, I just want to mention chocolate balloon. Because uh, uh, because of the, the DCB controversy that's ongoing, I think chocolate balloon uh, uh, allows control dilatation. It has this unique pillows and groove sort of a nano uh, uh, design, and the pillows manage the force along the entire lesion, allowing for uniform dilatation, and the groove uh, uh, allows for pressure relief. So uh, for me. I always try to get uh, multiple access as quickly as possible, luminum crossing, a threat to me to change the compliance of the vessel, and proceed with optimal balloon angioplasty, uh, uh, meaning slow and prolonged inflation with lower pressure, and also progressively go up on the balloon size. So stenting is bail out, and uh, uh, in the chocolate bar registry, almost showed the freedom from flow limiting dissection was 100% and there's very low bell out stand rate. So because of that, uh, we did an institutional uh, investigation. The outcome of a chocolate balloon angioplasty as an adjunctive therapy in below the knee PAD interventions. Uh, this is single center, single operator uh, experience. So we have 50 consecutive CLI patients in row, uh, uh, starting in January 2018. Uh, they all went, uh, uh, underwent angiosomal directed vessel crossing intervention. There's, there were a total of 66 limbs, and 90% of the vessel were CTOs. Rutherford class 4, 29 legs, uh, class 5, 24 legs, and class 6, 13 legs. Uh, most of them had orbital arthrectomy, and procedure success rate, uh, pretty much just one patient was not successful. 
So the outcome, average follow-up was uh, 3.2 months, because usually that's the time uh, the podiatrist and the wound care center will call you whether the wound's healing or not. Uh, All-cause mortality was 6%, but procedure-related mortality was zero. Clinical-driven target vessel revascularization was 12%, sort of similar to this, um, the chocolate balloon registry data. Uh, and dis major dissection or bailout stenting rate was zero also. And major di uh, amputation would only occur in one patient, and the minor amputation, uh, pretty much those were all already planned by the podiatrist. So I just want to mention this patient, um, at five months, the toes were already back to normal, uh, warm and pink, but the heel still had a small slit-like opening. Uh, so, you know, we know even with level one angiographic success, the limb salvage, salvage rate is very high in the upper 80s, but the wound healing rate is still lagging. It's in the upper 60s. So this really speaks to the, uh, again, speaks to for the need for a multidisciplinary approach, collaboration among all specialties, and currently, which is a class one indication.